starts right now. An investigation into a possible human smuggling case turns out to be a huge misunderstanding. We've been following this story all day. We'll explain what led up to the large law enforcement response. We continue our coverage of the San Antonio migrant tragedy, the latest on victims identified and the challenges the medical examiner faces getting their names. Nearly 10 months after her son was murdered, an alleged suspect is captured. A mother speaking with KSAT about a newfound piece she's found. But we start with the latest on this afternoon's large police response on South General McMullen. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says the people seen jumping in and out of an 18 wheeler were here legally. Yeah, the sheriff said it himself. People here are, quote, hyper vigilant, end quote, after Monday's tragedy involving the deaths of dozens of migrants. Yeah, the night team's Camelia Juarez was there as investigators tried to clear up the confusion concerned citizen that said there were people jumping out of this 18 wheeler. Now, for obvious reasons, that raised a whole lot of red flags for her. Bear County constables responded to that call here at the Winston Square Apartments just before five o'clock this afternoon. It took a few hours, but investigators were able to confirm the 14 immigrants were hired to clean out an apartment. The sheriff says the group has legal status, live in Bear County, and are paid workers. Some did not have work permits, which makes him suspicious of contractors who hired them. I wouldn't I wouldn't call it fire just yet, but there's a little smoke, some cause for concern. All 14 people are in good health and were free to leave after questioning. Sheriff Salazar says people are on edge given the recent tragedy, but he is still encouraging people to say something if they see something. I'd rather have a, a bit of, it be a false alarm and check it out than not check it out and find out somebody died after the fact. We spoke to staffers and management at Winston Square Apartments. They confirmed the immigrants were contracted to work there. But of course, people are on edge, hoping to avoid another tragedy. Camelia Juarez, Quesa 12 News. Thank you, Camelia. Tonight, we are learning the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office has positively identified six of the 53 migrants who died after being left in an abandoned tractor trailer on the southwest side just four days ago. 48 of the people died at the scene. Five others died in local hospitals. Officials say the process of identifying the victims is taking extra time because they're from foreign countries. 42 other victims have what officials say are potential identifications, but are waiting for confirmation from their respective consulates. And five remain unidentified at this time. According to Mexican officials, the truck was carrying 67 migrants who traveled from Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras. And court documents are revealing new details about what happened before that tractor trailer was found Monday night. Federal investigators say one of those suspects, 28 year old Christian Martinez, part of a text conversation with the suspected driver on Monday. The federal complaint against Martinez outlines those texts to 45 year old Omero Zamorano. Investigators say Martinez sent a picture of a truckload manifest at 12:17 p.m. Zamorano responded at 12:19 p.m. saying, quote, I go to the same spot, end quote. Investigators say Martinez sent GPS coordinates and several messages between 1244 in the afternoon and 617 at night, asking the driver his location and for him to call. No response was received. Police had already been called by the time Martinez sent his last text message. The criminal complaint against Martinez also says he told a third party that the driver did not know the truck's AC unit stopped working. Martinez charged with conspiracy to transport illegal aliens resulting in death. Zamorano, shown here in an old mugshot, faces a charge of smuggling illegal immigrants resulting in death. Two more suspects are in custody on federal weapons charges. The Department of Justice's review of the law enforcement response during the Uvalde school massacre is underway. This week, members of the critical incident review team visited Robb Elementary for the very first time. That's where 19 students and two teachers died. In an official statement from the DOJ, they say visiting the scene of the crime is just one of the pieces uh, of their thorough and comprehensive review. The goal of the review is to provide an independent look at the response and identify the best practices practices to help first responders in future responses. The DOJ's findings will be made public once it is complete. This has torn me up. 
and I want justice for my son. That was Christopher Olivares' mother nine months ago after her son was killed at his own home. Tonight, the man accused of stabbing him is in custody. Mary Coronado sat down with the night team's John Paul Barajas to speak about the closure she desperately needed. I had these shields in my body that ran down and I, I started crying and it was just like, a miracle that a piece that they caught this person and I cried. It was a moment Christopher Olivares' mother says she waited for desperately. Mary Quinado took us through the moment she learned police made an arrest in her son's murder, as well as what the last nine months have been like. Crying every day in the shower, trying to make myself strong, was suffering in me. Coronado says she watched live as 20-year-old Sebastian Hernandez was cuffed and put into the back of a police unit. Did you do this? That night. I never met a friend of Did you kill Christopher? It just made me want you know to say, would give you the right to take some, my son's life away. According to police, Hernandez stabbed Olivares, stole his car, and set it on fire out in Guadalupe County. He was also seen on Olivares' doorbell camera before and again on the night of the murder. Hernandez's murder charge carries the possibility of a life sentence. The grieving mother explains having him behind bars brings her a little bit of peace, but it won't bring back what was taken from her. I'm glad he's caught, but why would you do that? That's why I know why did you brutally murder my son like that? Well, Ivaris' mother says she would like to see the suspect get the maximum sentence, and because he is in custody now, she hopes to fulfill her son's dreams of traveling. That means taking road trips and catching flights to places like Hawaii and Italy. At the Bear County Jail, John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, John Paul. A man accused of killing an elementary school teacher has been indicted by a Bear County grand jury. Matthew Weising is facing a murder charge for the death of 23-year-old Michael Echanis. The shooting happened back in March at an apartment complex on Gus Ecker. Police say Weising allegedly shot Echanis several times. Relatives told police that Weising was taking a recent breakup poorly and his ex-girlfriend was dating Echanis. If convicted, he could face 5 to 99 years in prison. Meanwhile, a grand jury has indicted a San Antonio man accused of hitting a woman with his car and then leaving the scene. Investigators say Israel Lopez allegedly hit 26-year-old Ivan Arias on Roosevelt Avenue in April of 2020. Arias was pronounced dead at the scene. Lopez charged with failure to stop and render aid resulting in death. He faces up to 20 years in prison if convicted. Several areas are banning fireworks and canceling fireworks displays due to the drought conditions. Fireworks shows in Fairworks Ranch, Fredericksburg, and Bernie have all been canceled. Bernie prohibits personal fireworks within the city limits and outside of it. Kendall County, like Bear County and numerous other counties, has temporarily prohibited the use of certain kinds of fireworks, namely skyrockets with sticks and missiles with fins. People in the area uh, are, of course, disappointed, but obviously understanding. And of course, my family and I would love to see the fireworks, but I think out of everyone's safety in Bernie, it's a good idea. Well, it's a little disappointing to think everybody could use something happy and cheerful happening, but I'm also concerned about the wildfires. And Bernie City officials say if you do set off fireworks, be ready to act to any small fires by having a bucket of water ready. And there are some fireworks displays still happening in our area. We have a complete list of those along with a list of cancellations. Just head to KSAT.com. On top of celebrating America here in Military City USA, we are celebrating the men and women of our armed forces. How you can enjoy this year's River Parade. And it's an inspection, inspection that comes once a year, checking the water quality of public pools, what inspectors are looking for, and why they're so overwhelmed with work. Nearly 48 million people expected to travel by sky this 4th of July weekend, but will they actually make it on time? That's the question everyone wants to know. We're going to break down the factors that could affect that holiday trip right after the break. 
Welcome back. Now to the holiday weekend travel rush. This 4th of July is expected to be the second busiest for travel in over 20 years, according to AAA, with roughly 48 million Americans celebrating away from home this year. And tonight, thousands of flights are delayed or canceled as severe weather hits multiple airports. Just as the holiday weekend kicks off across America, a bump in the road for thousands of travelers. Several major airports implementing ground stops with severe weather slamming some parts of the country. As soon as we got to the airport, the flight was canceled. The surging number of passengers and pandemic-related staffing shortages also to blame. I'm expecting that to be delayed, so I've already told my friend who's going to be picking me up. Delta, American, and United cutting back flights scheduled for the next two months with insufficient staffing. Delta even offered eight passengers on one overbooked flight $10,000 cash for their seat, as the airline also deals with pilots picketing overpay and scheduling. We've now flown more overtime in the first six months of this year than we did in 2018 and 2019 combined. And in those years, those were record years for the airline industry. Delta vowing to continue hiring several hundred employees weekly. They're also bringing in corporate employees to help at major airports this weekend. The TSA keeping a thousand additional agents on standby if needed. Meanwhile, the roads are also seeing a surge in travelers as an estimated 42 million people opting to drive this year. It's horrible. I regret going to the gas station every time I have to go. In Compton, California, a line of cars waiting for a chance at a $50 gas giveaway. AAA with its tips for drivers. Realize that those gas stations that are closest to the highway exits will always be the most expensive. So if you can you take that exit and then drive down the road a mile or so to that gas station there, it will tend to be cheaper. Now, even though gas prices are lower this week compared to last week, it is still the highest of any other July uh, 4th of July weekend ever. Here locally, the average price is $4.42 per gallon. That is slightly lower than the national average of $4.84. Here in Texas, an estimated 3.1 million people are expected to travel by road. It's that time again. Now a look at your headlines in your night beat news flash. San Antonio City health inspectors have been very busy this summer with pool inspections. 36 inspectors have been tasked with inspecting more than 1800 pools across the city since spring. Not just city pools, but pools at HOAs, gyms, hotels. The annual inspections test for chlorine and pH levels. It's to ensure water is safe for you to swim in. Well, inspectors say they're seeing a link between water quality and the economy. We have seen an increase of some people not being able to keep up with the demand of the pool. And we're getting, we've gotten several complaints about pools being green. Um, but when we go out there, we explain to them they have to keep up their water quality and then um, they do their best to keep it up for us. Yeah, green pools aren't good. Inspectors expect a higher rate of calls following the holiday weekend. If you have concerns about the water quality of your community pool or hotel pool, Report it to 311. It's Independence Day weekend, and in downtown San Antonio, the barge is ready for tomorrow morning's 10th annual Armed Forces River Parade. KSAT got to preview some of the barges that'll be floating along the Riverwalk starting at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Spectators will see everything from this guy, a bald eagle, to the Declaration of Independence, as well as honors for each branch of the U.S. military. We have wives of the military that are that are represented because they sacrifice. And we also have a, a, a float of remembrance, which is actually the Visit San Antonio flight, float um, to remember all of the military that have lost their lives. The parade starts at 11, as I said, so you may want to get there early. Admission is free. You can find all this information right now on KSAT.com. And good news tonight for families who rely on state assistance. Funding for the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, also known as SNAP, has been extended through July. The state's providing an additional $301.8 million in emergency SNAP benefits. Governor Greg Abbott's office says the amount each family receives depends on the number of dependents. But each household enrolled in the program should get at least $95 in emergency benefits. The money will be distributed to 1.4 million families by the end of the month. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. All right, we're taking a look outside at uh, El Camino. Look at those beautiful lights out there. The temperature's pretty nice if you're enjoying a little Kool-Aid outside. That's not far from the KSAT's 
studios. So you're saying we're going to go there after? No, that. I'm just saying it's not far. I don't, you know, <laughs> I don't know that we're dressed for it. <laughs> we're a little yeah, overdressed maybe. for, you know, and 86 degrees care. out there. Yeah. All right. Yep, it's a warm one. We kicked off July with a triple digit day, so pretty par for the course what we've been dealing with honestly for the last couple months hottest May on record hottest June on record and kicking off July with plenty of heat. Here's what you can expect over the holiday weekend. Another low chance of a late day shower tomorrow. After that rain chances fall off the board completely. It will just be sunny and hot Sunday and then again on Monday. But thankfully we've got a good breeze that will settle in over the next couple of days and it will be breezy Monday evening for fireworks show. So around dusk on Monday, warm, still near 90, mostly clear, but a good breeze will be in place then. South southeast winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. And uh, we we're talking about it earlier in the newscast. Just remember when it comes to the fireworks, it is still so dry out there. We had the rain earlier in the week. That was great, but it's not going to put much of a dent in this drought that is widespread across south central Texas. A big swath here, this dark red color of exceptional drought across our area. That's as bad as it gets. That ground out there is very dry, so please be very careful. Quick look at the day today. We started off with morning clouds. They went away real fast. Blue sky through lunchtime and then some of those bubbly cumulus clouds uh, popped up this afternoon and this evening. 76 the morning low 100 your high temperature today and we did have a few showers out there here or there uh, but most of us were just stuck with the heat today 103 was the high in hondo also 103 in pleasanton 97 gonzalez 99 kerrville and 97 up in rock springs right now doing a bit better but still hovering close to 90 in many spots 89 in hondo 88 pleasanton and still 95 out in del rio radar now is quiet we did have a couple of those pop-up showers and non-severe storms mainly west of 281 this afternoon and this evening and there will be the potential for that again tomorrow so as we head through the overnight hours no rain just some clouds that will build back in especially by dawn on saturday so we will start off with some morning clouds tomorrow very warm and humid with a lot of us starting the day close to 80 degrees as we get to lunchtime tomorrow, mostly sunny and then more of those puffy cumulus clouds will bubble up tomorrow afternoon and we'll have the chance for late in the afternoon, early in the evening, a couple more of those pop up downpours. A lot of us are going to miss out, so a lot of us are just going to be dealing with more triple digit heat tomorrow afternoon. Look for a high around 101 in Uvalde, 98 in Gonzales, also 98 New Braunfels, south southeasterly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour with that slim chance of a pop up shower. Sunday, Monday, Monday, just sunny and hot for the 4th of July holiday on Monday, but a nice breeze to carry us through to the early parts of next week, guys. Her money, her mind is on money. Money, money. And money's money, on money. her mind. <laughs> <laughs> right, so DeJounte Murray in Atlanta. Yeah. And he didn't, ex I mean, he didn't exactly clear up whether he asked for this trade. Right, and he's kind of actually saying that the Spurs wanted him to succeed somewhere else, not in a rebuilding situation. Right. right. When we come back here, there was that report that said that his agent and himself had actually told the Spurs they were not going to re-sign before he would be available to be a, what they call a max deal player. And the face of the franchise is now this guy coming up. We actually been talking for about two, two, three weeks. So he, he pushed the needle and he wanted it, you know, as much as I wanted it. DeJounte Murray let us know what went on behind the scenes before the trigger was finally pulled on the Spurs blockbuster trade in big board sports that does not look right. <laughs> Less than 24 hours after the Spurs confirmed they had traded DeJounte Murray to the Hawks. Their former all-star point guard was introduced in Atlanta today. In the blockbuster trade that was reported on Wednesday, officially announced on Thursday, Murray and Jock Landale were sent to the Hawks in exchange for three first-round draft picks. The first one next season protected in a swap of first-round picks in 2026, along with Ford Danello Gallinari, who's expected to have his contract bought out. What was DJ's reaction when he found out he had been traded by the Spurs? I was smiling. There was a, a lot of mixed emotions. Uh, you know, like I said, San Antonio, you know, took a chance on me. They they helped me out tremendously. Uh, you know, like I said, a family forever. And it was hard talking to Coach Pop, you know, with this situation. But on the other end, uh, what made it easier, like I said, was them wanting the best for DeJounte Murray and, and you know, just how hard I work. And I'm a winner and I want to win. So 
you know, uh, I was excited. DeJounte was delighted to be paired with two-time NBA All-Star Trey Young, who's about to start his fifth season in the NBA. I've been knowing Trey since he was in high school, and I was in high school uh, a couple years older than him. But, you know, we've been knowing each other for a while, but obviously we wasn't as close as we're about to get. Uh, but, you know, it just was something we both wanted. Uh, and he didn't believe it at first. And I told him, like, it's going to happen. And, you know, when it happened, you know, he called me excited. Uh, I was smiling excited. And like I said, I'm just, you know, thankful and grateful and so excited to join him. Lonnie Walker IV is saying goodbye to San Antonio today. He made his feelings known on social media after agreeing to a one-year, $6.5 million deal with the Lakers after the Spurs withdrew their qualifying offer. Lonnie writes, thank you, San Antonio, the city of San Antonio, truly welcoming me into the city with such open arms. Felt like a second home instantly, and I can't thank you enough, Spurs, for giving just a kid from Reading the opportunity of a lifetime. Eternal gratitude. Now that both DeJounte and Lonnie have departed, the face of the Spurs franchise is Kelvin Johnson, who's about to start just his fourth season in silver and black. So what happens next season after missing the playoffs the last three seasons with arguably the youngest team in franchise history? You know, we come in, we're going to fight. We're going to play hard. We're going we're gonna to go out there and compete. We're going to win. Um, I think uh, we got some great guys around here. I think that, uh, I mean, we definitely lost some big pieces, but I think we, we definitely got some great guys in ready to work and ready to learn. I think, uh, I think everything will be all right. All right, with first pick Jeremy Sohan unable to participate in the Summer League minicam due to testing positive for COVID, all eyes will be on the Spurs' second pick in the NBA draft, wingman Malachi Brannon out of Ohio State. Brannon considered to be the steal of the draft by some after he dropped to 20th overall with the Spurs scooped him up, and now he will get to showcase his talents in Las Vegas starting next week. I feel like my game rises when I'm competing, um, so I'm super excited. Um, always watch Summer League on TV, but now playing in it is, is going to be exciting and fun. I'm super, super excited. <laughs> It all starts next Friday in Vegas when the Spurs face the Cleveland Cavaliers at 4 p.m. Another blockbuster trade in the NBA. The Utah Jazz are sending defensive star Rudy Gobert to the Minnesota Timberwolves in exchange for Malik Beasley, Patrick Beverly, Jared Vanderbilt, Leandro Balmero, and the number 22 pick Walker Kessler and four first-round draft picks unprotected in 23, 25, and 27 and top five protection pick in 2029. Key dates for the Cowboys training camp release coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. It's hard to believe we are now less than a month away from the Dallas Cowboys training camp in Oxnard, California. Players set to report on July 25th. The Cowboy charter lands in Southern California, followed by the annual State of the Cowboys address. First practice, here are some key dates released in the official schedule. The players report on the 25th, State of the Cowboys press conference, the 26th, the 27th first practice, the 30th, the opening ceremony, and on the 31st, a Sunday, Jerry Jones live on instant replay. The National High School Hall of Fame induction ceremony was held tonight here in San Antonio, the Grand Hyatt Hotel downtown on the River Rock. Before the ceremony started, a press conference was held this afternoon that included NFL Hall of Famer Thurman Thomas, former PGA professional Nota Begay the third, who spent time here in the Alamo City, and Olympian Sonia Richards Ross. It's great to be back in San Antonio. I lived here for about seven years, and so being back in the community and um, being at this event is really special to me, have my family here, and it's a reflection on just all the coaches and um, people, teachers that supported me and encouraged me to pursue my dream, which was to play golf at a high level, and I uh, was able to achieve that through a lot of hard work, but also a lot of support from people in my life. Congratulations to Nota, and congratulations to her own Katie Blake. She's headed to Dallas, and this is her last broadcast tonight, and she's so happy because she will not have to sit next to the sports department for the rest of her <laughs> life. <laughs> I'm sure that's one of the I, I didn't of think about that, Greg, but you make a good <laughs> point. You really do. <laughs> Valid point. All right, we'll be right back. All right, it is a big night tonight. It's sad, we're excited, but we're also just crying. Tonight is... Katie's last night on the air uh, newscast here on KSAT. 140 episodes of Rooftop Weather. She loves her cats. <laughs> and I believe, wasn't it like just a few years ago on the 4th of July, you helped me judge like a hot dog eating contest yes. or something like that?